Coffee Break German, Lesson 15. Hallo zurück zu einer neuen Episode von Coffee Break German. We are back with another episode of Coffee Break German. My name is Mark. I'm Thomas. My job here is to learn with you, our listeners. And of course, Thomas is here as our native speaker to help us understand some German and be using that German in a variety of situations. Last time we started learning about the hotel and how to check into it. And this time we'll be continuing that topic by having a look at a conversation. We'll be having a, a sample conversation between ourselves. Again, I'll be checking into the hotel and Thomas will be the receptionist. After that, we'll be moving on to some numbers and days of the week and things like that. Uh, it won't be the most exciting lesson, I would imagine, but hopefully you'll enjoy it nonetheless. Bist du bereit, Mark? Bin ich was? Bereit? Bist du fertig? Fertig, ja. Bereit? Is it the same thing? Ready? Prepared? Okay. Ich bin bereit. Sehr gut. Los geht's. So the situation for this conversation is that my name is Mr. Mackay and I'm going to be checking into a hotel in Munich, perhaps. Okay. So here goes. Grüß Gott. Hallo. Haben Sie reserviert? Ja, my name is Herr Mackay. Mm, Herr Mackay, einen Moment. Is das M C K A Y? Ja, stimmt. Also, Sie haben ein Doppelzimmer und ein Einzelzimmer reserviert. Ist das richtig? Ja, ein Doppelzimmer und ein Einzelzimmer für drei Nächte. Ausgezeichnet. Haben die Zimmer ein Bad oder eine Dusche? Das Doppelzimmer hat ein großes Bad, aber das Einzelzimmer hat nur eine Dusche. Leider haben wir keine Einzelzimmer mit Bad. Mach nichts. Wie viel kosten die Zimmer pro Nacht? Das Doppelzimmer kostet 100 Euro pro Nacht und das Einzelzimmer kostet 70 Euro pro Nacht. Und ist das Frühstück inklusiv? Ja, wir haben ein Frühstücksbuffet in dem Restaurant zwischen 7 und 10. Dankeschön. Also, Ihre Schlüssel und einen angenehmen Aufenthalt. Let's listen again to this conversation at a more normal speaking speed. Grüß Gott. Hallo. Haben Sie reserviert? Ja, mein Name ist Herr Mackay. Ah, Herr Mackay. Einen Moment. Ist das M-C-K-A-Y? Ja, stimmt. Also, Sie haben ein Doppelzimmer und ein Einzelzimmer reserviert. Ist das richtig? Ja, ein Doppelzimmer und ein Einzelzimmer für drei Nächte. Ausgezeichnet. Haben die Zimmer ein Bad oder eine Dusche? Das Doppelzimmer hat ein großes Bad, aber das Einzelzimmer hat nur eine Dusche. Leider haben wir keine Einzelzimmer mit Bad. Macht nichts. Wie viel kosten die Zimmer pro Nacht? Das Doppelzimmer kostet 100 Euro pro Nacht und das Einzelzimmer kostet 70 Euro pro Nacht. Und ist das Frühstück inklusiv? Ja, wir haben ein Frühstücksbuffet in dem Restaurant zwischen 7 und 10. Dankeschön. Also, Ihre Schlüssel und einen angenehmen Aufenthalt. Now, there were quite a few things in that conversation that we need to go through. The first one was when we described the room. We said, ein großes Bad, a big bath. So, das Doppelzimmer hat ein großes Bad. The, you know. The double room has a big bath. There was also something else in that particular part of the conversation when we were talking about the rooms. Yes, I said, leider haben wir keine Einzelzimmer mit Bad. So, there's keine in there, so there was no something Leider, what does leider mean? We already heard it a couple of times. It says, unfortunately. Unfortunately. And then you go on to say, haben ha wir. Haben wir keine Einzelzimmer mit Bad. So, unfortunately, we have no single rooms with a bath. Genau. Okay. Um, then one of the phrases that I had to say when I was reading this script, because I didn't really know the phrase and didn't know what it meant, macht nichts. Doesn't matter. Don't bother. Okay, so macht nichts. Literally, it makes nothing. Makes nothing. Yeah, you explained that before we started recording today, so that's why I, I do sort of know what it means. Macht nichts, okay? And then you you said something about the breakfast. Yeah, we learned breakfast, Frühstück, 
And I said, wir haben ein Frühstücksbuffet in dem Restaurant zwischen sieben und zehn. So something about a buffet, a, a breakfast buffet. Yeah, in the restaurant, in dem Restaurant. And then between seven and ten. Zwischen, between, sieben und zehn. Zwischen, sieben und zehn. In between seven and ten. Okay. Zwischen, sieben und zehn. Zwischen, that's a, a useful word. Zwischen. Zwischen. Could you use zwischen if you're describing where something is? For example, the bank is between the swimming pool and the school. Die Bank ist zwischen dem Schwimmbad und der Schule. Okay, so we can come back to that another time. Now, I was thinking about the breakfast in the hotel and the times, and I have a phrase for you, and you try to understand it. Imagine you're talking about breakfast, and you're told when it's served. Then you might hear, unter der Woche, zwischen sieben und neun, und am Wochenende, zwischen sieben und zehn. Okay, I heard two sets of numbers there, so we had zwischen sieben und neun, and then zwischen sieben und zehn. I think I've got an idea where you're going with this, but could you perhaps give me it in other words? Okay, you also might hear am Montag, Dienstag, Mittwoch, Donnerstag und Freitag zwischen sieben und neun und am Samstag und Sonntag zwischen sieben und zehn. Okay, I recognize days of the week in there. So let's listen to these days of the week again. Montag. 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 Dienstag. Dienstag. That's Tuesday. Dienstag. Wednesday. Mittwoch. 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 Thursday. Donnerstag. 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 And Friday. Freitag. 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 Okay, so you said... Am Montag, Dienstag, Mittwoch, Donnerstag und am Freitag zwischen sieben und neun. So you're saying during the, the working week. Yes, you can say unter der Woche, during, under the week or an den Arbeitstagen, on the days we work. Okay, so in the working week, breakfast would be served, if we come back to our context here, between seven and nine. And then you said am Wochenende. Am Wochenende, the weekend. Yes. So at the weekend, zwischen sieben und zehn. So at the weekend between seven and ten. And what were the two days of the weekend? Samstag, Saturday. Samstag. Samstag. And Sunday? Sonntag. 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 Okay, so let's have all the days of the week one more time. Montag, Dienstag, Mittwoch. Montag. Dienstag, Mittwoch, Donnerstag, Freitag, Samstag, Sonntag. Donnerstag, Freitag, Samstag, Sonntag. Ganz genau. You might also hear the word Sonnabend for Saturday if you're more in the northern parts of Germany. Let's say that word again. Sonnabend. Sonnabend. Is that like the evening of Sunday or the eve of Sunday, I guess? Yes. Okay. So we've got the days of the week and we also learned during the week and at the weekend for the, the breakfast idea. I think it's time now to move on and learn some numbers. We've already done the numbers from 1 to 10. We now need to go on a little bit further than that. So let's hear 11 to 20. I'll say the English first, you say the German and then we'll leave everyone time to repeat. So 11. 11. 11. 11. 12 12 12 12 13 13 13 13 14 14 14 14 15 15 15 15 16 16 16 16 17 17 17 17 18 18 18 18 19 19 19 19 and 20 20 20 
20. Okay, so 11 to 20 are numbers in themselves, at least 11 and 12 are, and then we get 13. 13. That's almost like 310. 3 and 10, 13. And then 14. 14. So same 15. idea. You have to pay attention when you get to 16 and 17, because it's not 6, 10, it's 16. And not 7, 10, but 17. Okay, so 16 and 17. 16, 17. Okay, right, let's move on from 20. How do we say 21? 21. So that's 1 and 20. 21. Okay, so we've got a, a precedent for this in, in English, in, in Old English, when, for example, in the nursery rhyme, uh, four and twenty blackbirds. Uh, so you would say in German, one and twenty. I, I assume you go on and say two and twenty, three and twenty. Zweiundzwanzig, dreiundzwanzig, vierundzwanzig. Okay, so let's count from twenty up to thirty. We'll introduce thirty when we get to that. So twenty. Zwanzig. 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 Twenty-one. 21 21 21 22 22 22 22 23 23 23 23 24 24 24 24 25 25 25 25 26 26 26 26 27 27 27 27 28 28 28 28 29 29 29 29 and what's 30 30. 30. 30. Okay. So let's now just do 30, 40, 50, and so on. So 30, 30. 30. 40. 40. 40. 40. 50. 50. 50. 50. 60. 60. 60. 60. 70. 70. 70, 70, 80, 80, 80, 80, 90, 90, 90, 90, and 100, 100, 100, 100. You also might hear 100 for 100. Okay, I guess in, in English we have 100 and 100, and we might use them in slightly different situations. Depends on the situation. Okay, but when we're counting, we can say 99. 100. 100, so 99 into 100. Yes. Okay, and when we're adding numbers to 100, so if we were to say 143, for example, that would be? 143. So we just say the number, the 100 number, 100. And then the 43 number. Yeah, you don't need to add an and in between or something. Okay, this is a, a, an interesting thing in English because in the UK we say 143, but of course elsewhere in the English-speaking world you might say 143. So if we say 143, just remember we're based in the UK and all that. Okay. And of course for 200 we just say 200, 300, 400. Okay, so finally we're coming across something in German which isn't too complicated. <laughs> Very easy. The numbers are easy. So we can now basically name any number between 1, or indeed 0, because 0 was... 0. And 999. What's 1,000? 1,000. 1,000. So does that work the same way? We can sometimes say 1,000, but 1,000. Exactly. Okay. So our challenge, I guess, is to name some numbers between 0 and 1,000. Let's try this out. I give you four numbers in English and you try to say them in German. Okay, so number one, number eins. 157. So as usual, we'll leave some time for our listeners. That was 157. 
So I think that would be 157. 157. Okay, so I guess it is a little more complicated than, than just 157 because we've got to think of the 7 and 50. So we've got to think of the 7 before the 5 in a sense. 57. You have to remember to always switch around the units and the tenth. So 57 is 7 and 50. Okay, so let's try our second challenge here. 98. So that's fairly straightforward. That becomes 8 and 90. So 98. Richtig. Number 3. 312. So I think that would be 312. Ganz genau. And last one. 675. So a little more complicated, that one. 675 is 675. 675. 675. Now, we'll get plenty of opportunity to practice numbers further in future lessons. For now, we're going to hand you over to Julia, our cultural correspondent, because she also has some information about numbers and days of the week from a cultural perspective. Over to you, Julia. Hello, everyone. It's Julia here, your cultural correspondent. Aber warum spreche ich auf Englisch? Ihr versteht schon ganz gut Deutsch. Eigentlich sollte ich nur auf Deutsch sprechen. Maybe I should only speak in German. Ah, maybe not yet. Vielleicht noch nicht. Aber das kommt später. We'll get to that. I have to say that this lesson about numbers and days isn't the most inspiring topic. But as usual, there are a few things which I thought you'd find interesting. First of all, I have a question for you. Which day does the week start on in your country? Is it Monday or Sunday? What about on a calendar? Does the calendar go Montag, Dienstag, Mittwoch and so on? Or does it start with Sonntag, Montag, Dienstag und so weiter? Well, here in Germany, all calendars are printed with the first day of the week as Monday so that you can look forward to the weekend at the end of the week. Of course, maybe this is the same as in your country. But I was always a bit confused in Scotland when I saw calendars starting on Sunday, the seventh day of the week. Talking of interesting facts about days of the week and calendars, you've already learned the main word for Saturday is Samstag. Now, as Thomas has said, there is another word for Saturday too, Sonnabend. Traditionally, this word was used in the north of Germany, whereas Samstag was used in southern Germany, Austria and Switzerland. In fact, Sonnabend was the official word for Saturday in the former GDR, or East Germany, which is why it's still used by some people and understood by everyone. However, since Samstag is used almost universally through the media, it has become the standard word for Saturday. So, there you have it. Das war ein weiterer Kulturreport von mir. Macht's gut. Bis bald. Vielen Dank, Julia. Okay, before we finish this lesson, we've just got time to hand you over to Kirsten, who's going to be talking about numbers in a sense and that we're going to be looking at plurals. She promised us that last week, so it's time now to have a listen to what she has to tell us about plurals of nouns. Thanks, Mark. As promised in last week's lesson, today we're going to look at plurals. Thomas has already explained to you that there are several ways to form the plural of a noun in German. Mark was getting a bit worried about plurals in the last lesson, so I thought I'd try and simplify things for you all. There are a few rules, which I'll explain now, that help make forming plurals a little bit easier. We'll take the easiest rule first. That is the rule that most nouns which end in the letters er, el or en don't change in the plural. These are usually masculine or neuter nouns 
An example of one of these is Zimmer, as you heard in last week's episode. Das Zimmer is a neuter noun which ends in ER, and so it doesn't change in the plural. Ein Zimmer, zwei Zimmer. Another one that you know already, which ends in EN, is Kuchen. Ein Kuchen, zwei Kuchen. Finally, we have the noun ending in EL, Strudel, which also stays the same. Now, there are some words which end in ER, EL or EN, which do have a little change. This change involves the first vowel in the word, so the U of Bruder and so on. As you've already heard, the plural of Bruder is Bruder. When written, we add what is called an umlaut, which looks like two dots placed above the vowel. But fortunately, you can only add it to the letters A, O and U. So you don't have to worry too much about when to add an umlaut and when not. Adding an umlaut doesn't only change the way the vowel looks, it also changes the way it sounds. So it's ein Bruder, but zwei Brüder. Here, the U sound changes to an U sound. With the noun der Vogel, meaning the bird, the O sound changes in the plural, giving us Vögel. Ein Vogel, zwei Vögel. We then have the category of nouns that add letters to the end. For most feminine nouns, you have to add the letter N or EN, depending on what the word ends with. Dusche was an example of this kind. Eine Dusche, zwei Duschen, where you just have to add an N. With eine Reservierung, however, you have to add EN because of the consonants at the end, which gives us zwei Reservierungen. However, with an R at the end, as in Schwester, you only need to add an N, which gives us zwei Schwestern. There are more patterns, which you'll get used to as you learn more German nouns, and we've listed a few of these in the notes for this week's lesson in the premium materials, which Mark will tell you about later. But before I pass you back to the studio, I'll give you two final little tips. First of all, when you learn a new noun, it's always good to learn its plural form with it, just as you do with its gender. But my most important tip about German nouns and their plural forms is don't worry about them. German children learn these plural forms naturally through exposure to the words in, in books and hearing people say them. So you can do the same as you continue to experience written and spoken German. Well, thank you, Kirsten, for putting my mind and indeed the mind hopefully, of our listeners at rest with regard to German plurals. That's where we're going to leave the lesson for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed the lesson. And even if the numbers are a little bit boring, they're very useful. And one of the good things about numbers is that you can practice them anywhere. So this week, as you're wandering around and you see numbers around you, whether it's on train timetables or on shop windows or if it's prices, then think about translating those numbers into German. Kirsten also mentioned that in this week's bonus material, there's additional information about the plurals of German nouns. And if you want to find out how you can get those bonus materials, which include comprehensive lesson notes featuring all the words and phrases covered, and indeed additional materials, as Kirsten has explained, plus the video flashcards version of this lesson and bonus audio materials, then head over to coffeebreakgerman.com. Within the lesson notes for this lesson, you'll find the links that you need in order to sign up for our members version. Also, das reicht für heute. Vielen Dank. Wir sehen uns das nächste Mal. Bis dann. Tschüss. Tschüss. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.